let's start where we can find some common agreement. And that is that words that are used matter. And um, racist, bigoted, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic words can have very serious consequences. In fact, um, just last week, I was at the funeral of a Muslim woman who was murdered in my district, my constituent, Nazma Khanam, who, although it hasn't been declared a hate crime, we are deeply suspicious um, that it was. And it would be foolish of us <clears throat> if we were to ignore the atmosphere of xenophobia and Islamophobia that is being propagated, particularly at the presidential campaign um, level. So part of what the council does, as you all know, you've probably all testified before the council um, many, many times, is sometimes we pass bills, sometimes we pass resolutions that express the sentiment of the council. And very often, and particularly this council, being a proudly progressive council, we take stands against racism and sexism and, mis and uh, homophobia and Islamophobia, et cetera. Um, but I, you know, the irony of somebody testifying um, against a, 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 an anti-BDS resolution with the slogan, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it, it, it is just mind boggling to me because at the heart of the BDS movement, particularly as it relates to cultural, social, academic boycotts, is the suppression of viewpoints and speech, particularly on college campuses, but not exclusively. People who have pro-Israel, pro-Israel viewpoints being shouted down and being prevented from speaking, or Jewish students who are leafleting or tabling um, being prevented from speaking or articulating their views. That too is the BDS movement. And I also hear the, the phrase a lot from this panel that the BDS movement is nonviolent, as if nonviolence is enough to exclude any speech movement that is discriminatory. Now in New York State, we have laws against discriminatory conduct that is not violent. You cannot deny someone employment based on their race or national origin. You cannot de deny someone public accommodations. You cannot deny someone housing, et cetera, et cetera. And including in New York State, you cannot initiate a boycott or conduct a boycott against someone because of their national origin, among other categories. So the fact that that conduct does not rise to the level of violence does not mean that it is not both abhorrent and illegal. So I, um, our views on the Israel-Palestinian issue are <laughs> diametrically opposed. And some of us have shared those views on Twitter and other forums. Yes, we have. So I'm not going to do that today. But as a legal matter, and, and I, I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't have your written testimony, so I don't... Radha. Radha. From, you're from legal Palestine? Palestine legal. Palestine legal, I'm sorry. The reference was made by you and I think another panelist to, um, to the Claiborne case, which was a Supreme Court case decided in 1982, which upheld or rather prevented the tort claim against um, the NAACP uh, for conducting a, a boycott. But I would like you to recognize on, on the record, or correct me if I'm wrong, but 10 years after that case, the Second Circuit had the opportunity to examine New York State's anti-boycott law in the case uh, Jews for Jesus versus JCRC, ironically. And it upheld New York State's anti-boycott law because like conduct or speech that, or speech that results in conduct that discriminates based on race, religion, national origin, and employment, housing, you name it, that also includes boycotts and interfering with economic activity because of someone's national origin. And that is what, speaking for myself, that is what the BDS movement is. 
it identifies people of a national origin, Israel. In point of fact, and I would be surprised if, if this panel of very capable, intelligent, experienced people would deny it, it has often, very often, expressed itself beyond Israelis and just Jews generally. But can you please recognize or correct me if I'm wrong that in New York State, we have a law that prohibit, prohibits boycotting um, uh, based on national origin, <clears throat> and that law has been upheld by the second, United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, one level before, below the Supreme Court, after the Supreme Court's decision in Claiborne. Uh, 